Okay, guys, so today we're gonna to be talking about Swashbuckler Keel Hall. Is she good? Hey guys, come and join us at twitch.tv slash teambash. We stream 18 plus hours a day and we're the most active Save the World streamers on the planet. So come and join us and be a part of the team. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, man. Oh yeah. So this is the character that that the expansion needed right here. This is, uh, I haven't tested them all yet, but I have a feeling this is gonna be my favorite out of the bunch. Uh, this character is absolutely awesome. She looks amazing. She's all pirated out. She is the ninja pirate. And uh, she has the ability that I kind of wanted from the soldier. Uh, hers is, you know, flip-flopped. So rather than having sword damage increasing your pistol damage, you have pistol damage increasing your sword damage, which way, you know, it has clear, just so much better synergy and so much better functionality on the battlefield. Um, Dealing pistol damage is always the engagement tool. You start from long range, you start with pistols, you do damage, and then you move in for the sword kill. Like, it's just, it's the natural progression. Like, you, you start at range, and then the enemies get closer to you, and then you attack with melee. So, it works fantastic. I mean, it's it could be argued that the damage should be a lot higher. 65% is very, very low when you consider that as a, as a main character... Swordmaster Ken gets 75% um, damage bonus forever. <laughs> and uh, and the Assassin gets 90% damage pretty much forever. Uh, you know, this, this character seems a little out of place with only 65% bonus damage. With such a mediocre increase in damage, uh, it's just not, doesn't quite cut it. However, um, this character is still great. And the reason that it's great is, one, because there's not enough sword perks in the game, to be perfectly honest. Um, those characters that I'm talking about, uh, the Assassin, uh, can still function as a support squad bonus. The Legendary Blade can also function as a support squad bonus. You've got, so let's just go over these in detail here. We've got Assassin Sarah rocking the, uh, the Assassination skill. Dealing melee weapon damage grants one stack of Assassination up to five stacks. Very, very powerful ability, right? You've got, uh, that'd be 9. 9 times 2 is 18. So 22.5. 22.5% bonus damage after 5 swings. Not bad. Not too bad. 22.5. Then you've got the uh, Legendary bleed Blade, which is uh, Swordmaster Ken rocking 25% sword damage as long as he's in Shadow Stance. Again, the easiest activator in the world now that we have the Shadow the endless shadow. Endless shadow means every time you do a melee kill, uh, you're basically walking around perma perma shadowed. <laughs> you get an extra four seconds for every ninja that you're running, and I always run with four ninjas, so you get an extra twenty seconds. So twenty seconds of extra shadow armor, as long as you kill something every twenty seconds with a sword. Um, yeah, it's pretty easy to do. <laughs> pretty easy. So you got like this permanent twenty five percent bonus damage. You got 22.5% uh, bonus damage. You've got your anatomy lessons with Whiteout Fiona, giving you an extra 15 uh, crit rate. So you got more, you know, more chances to crit. Excellent, raising that damage up. Uh, then you've got Corrosive Strikes with Deadly Blade Crash. This makes it so your melee crits apply a 30% snare and affliction, uh, which deals 37% damage dealt to uh, dealt each second for three seconds. So gives you huge, huge bonus damage against big targets like Smashers and even Blasters. Uh, but mostly Smashers, that's where you really notice this, is you, you slow the Smasher down and you start ticking for huge amounts of damage. This is basically the Smasher Killer, is what this character is. Uh, really, really effective as a support slot for this. Um, and then, of course, you've got Survivalist to help you stay functional in battle. you got to keep on moving. Excellent. Awesome ability. So... The, the biggest reason that this character works so well is because there's such a lack of sword diversity in the game. Getting an extra, an extra character means that uh, we, we actually can fill in a full arsenal. Sword, 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 and some heals. So now we have a, a more rounded sword arsenal. And that, I think, makes all the difference. Now, this character is probably better as a support character being that it is a situational skill. Uh, you can get an extra 22% damage for six seconds. So rather than getting an extra 22.5% damage from, you know, from the assassin perk, you're going to have basically the same amount, but with a pistol trigger instead of 
an attack trigger. And the reason that it, that is good is because um, the the standard perk does not line up with the commander perk. Um, the commander perk is is super weak. Uh, sixty five percent bonus damage honestly is is underpowered. I mean, when you're looking at its peers, you know we're talking about the swordmaster being seventy five damage, assassin being ninety damage. This is sitting at a mediocre. 65% damage and it is a lot easier to proc those other ones than it is to proc a pistol. Using a pistol is kind of changing your tactic, right? The other ones are straight up. Attack with a sword, kill with a sword, keep killing with a sword. Simple, effective, massive. This one is jinky. This one is is using a pistol to get sword damage is very limited in what works, right? trying to use a pistol and then switch back to sword, you know, you're going to have that that dead period between your weapon switch and your ability to attack. It loses a lot of damage. You end, you end up losing a lot of effectiveness, making, you know, the weapon switch, you know, it just, it doesn't work as well, right? When you could just not weapon switch and do 75% bonus damage all the time or 90% bonus damage all the time, you would think that the bonus you would get for using a pistol would be a lot higher than 65% for a measly six seconds. There is no doubt about it, this is a garbage weak perk. But it is a garbage weak perk fitting into a slot where there was no other fill before. So now we're going from having only, you know, only three viable sword perks with a smasher killer to having a whole extra perk giving you a completely filled out arsenal. That is why this works so well. Because the the perks that were in place before this character were so bad that it was leaving a hole that literally any perk could have filled to make this character a better character. So that's what's happened. Uh, this character uh, can actually be used to great effect if you want to keep these three characters, or these rather these two characters in the, um, in the backup slot. Uh, this character actually gives you a really really neat attack style um, this works best when you're using a super super slow firing weapon that has all its damage front loaded so the best weapon in the entire game for this character i'm willing to bet is the zap zap it's the first when i when i look through my arsenal i'm like oh i'm looking for the slowest attack speed pistol in the game and you know what nothing is slower than the zap zap it is incredible and what's even better about the Zap Zap is it has perfect synergy with it, with a build like this. Uh, if you're going to use a weapon and a sword in the same build, um, the Zap Zap is everything that you need. It's almost like a mini rocket launcher. You shoot it if you hit a target like a blaster, which is you know the main threat for you. Um, the Zap Zap is going to knock that that target back, canceling their laser barrage basically saving your life over and over and over again. It gives you so much control over the battlefield as you're leaping, flying through the air. You take the zap zap, you just fire it right at the ground, and it does splash damage to everything, pushing everything back. You land, and then you, as soon as you land, you have this 65% bonus damage, and you just go to town and just completely annihilate everything. So this the perk is a little weak, and I think it should be tuned up to a minimum of 75% to a maximum of 100%. Anywhere between 75 and 100, I think that this thing would be would be a competitive weapon on par with these two characters here. These two characters are the two best uh, melee characters in the game, and this character is very similar, but distinctly weaker. So I think with a very minor tweak, Moving this up, giving it an extra 10% damage, moving it up to 75, all the way up to 100. Anywhere between that range is not going to be overpowered. It's going to work very, very well. In fact, I think it probably should be 100 because um, it is. It's this is the out of the three characters, this trigger enabler is the hardest to utilize and get damage out of. The, the using of the enabler is losing you damage that you could have been using with your melee. That said, this is an extremely fun character. It is super well designed, super entertaining to use. Um, I think you would have to have a zap zap to be able to have as much fun with this as I was having. 
uh, because the zap zap is just such a perfect, perfect catalyst for this character. It gives you all the AOE clearing that you need, uh, which you're going to need because this character has, you know, another problem. And that's just, it doesn't have Dragon Slash, which you're going to feel for sure. It's going to hurt you. Uh, throwing stars are completely worthless. If it had Dragon Slash, Throwing Stars, or sorry, Dragon Slash, Kunai, and Smoke Bomb, this character would be so, so much better. But unfortunately, Throwing Stars is just a dead perk on this one. It's something you'll just never use. Like, virtually never. Um, Kunai is still a really trash ability that needs an, a wider area of effect for it to be effective. Um, Smoke Bomb is an excellent ability. Um, it has a, has a bad cooldown, so it can't be like leaned on too, too heavy. But um, yeah, so it has weak abilities. It has a pretty weak uh, commander ability. But this thing is carried really, really hard by the fun factor. It's fun. It's functional. It has good synergy back and forth. It feels fun and, and, and effective to use. Um, I think you're going to need to get a zap zap to really have the most fun out of this. But I'm sure there's other really slow firing weapons like the bald eagle and possibly the new pirate pistol to to give this gun a good enabler to to function at a high level. So swashbuckler keel hall. Is she good? Oh, yeah. So good. So fun, fits in great, most likely not going to get used as a primary character. Honestly, going to probably be a, a standard perk for the better melee characters. But either way, whether you're using this as a primary or as a secondary, I think that um, I think this is a good addition to, to the game. I would like to see it get buffed a little bit more because it is a little bit underpowered, but I'm so glad that this character is a new character and... I'm, I'm super happy to to be able to hype on some of the pirate content because we have a winner. <laughs> okay, so this is this is Swashbuckler Keel Hall gameplay. This is the new pirate ninja. Uh, this is a special character with some very special tools. She basically gets powered up every time she shoots a pistol. So what we're doing here is we're running with a zap zap, and then we're switching over to our pistol to get that, you know, that 65% damage bonus. So this is very, very effective because the, the Zap Zap is an extremely slow firing weapon, which has awesome synergy with, uh, yeah, with our wonderful toys here. So we're just going to go like this. Just run just with these two weapons. We're going to go, hey, guys, boom. And then absolutely tear everything up. And then whenever time we want to have the uh, the damage bonus, or any time that we see an opportunity to hit a large group of enemies, we can switch over to the uh, to the zap to the zap zap and just basically devastate the target. All right, so we're gonna open with the zap zap and just go completely to town. Boom. Oh, Zap Zap, so nasty, man. Such a nasty weapon. And the nice thing about this is that the Zap Zap doesn't really require you to play you know, in any weird way. Like, the thing I like about this is that when you pull out the Zap Zap, it's really intuitive. Like, look at that. You just devastate an area, huge amounts of damage, and then just go to town with the sword. It's so just functional. You don't have to play, you don't have to do anything wacky. You don't have to play outside of your normal play style, your comfort zone, you know, you know, you don't have to do anything that would normally get you killed in order to utilize the power of this character. The character just has really, really effective power. Six seconds is more than enough time to, you know, do huge amounts of damage. My, uh, my one gripe is that I wish that, uh, it would be more visible on the screen. I would like it to be, I would like the buff to be more apparent so that I, uh, I could immediately. Oh, look at that, man. Look at this gun. Oh. Zap Zap is so sick. 
Any day you're using the zap zap is a good day. The fact that this fits into a meta build is just blowing my mind right now. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, basically we just lead with the, with the pistol, man. That's how this works. It's super, super easy. Works really well. See a shot, take a shot, run in and just destroy everything. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so powerful, man. It's so powerful. It's got such great synergy with swords. Now the crazy thing with this one here is you know, this is actually really good. I actually really like this. However, I think that this one would be more suitable as a um, as a support support bonus. I could see myself using this as a support much more than a main. Um, as a main ability, 65% um, is just not quite strong enough. Um, it finds its way into the build, though, simply because... Uh, like the downside is that it just doesn't it doesn't it's not strong enough right 65 percent is not strong enough when you have the assassin that can run around with a a 90 percent uh bonus pretty much all the time as long as you just keep on attacking you know to stop attacking with the assassin means you're going to lose you know a huge amount of of damage here we go shoot and go all in. See, the damage is pretty good, honestly. I'm, I, I, I've got, I got nothing bad to say about this build. This is actually really fun, really entertaining, very strong. Just destroys, man. Destroys. And this is largely a skill-based, uh, you know, system. You have a weapon that you can lean back on. Which, you know, is a fantastic weapon. Look at that. Block. Shoot. Stab you in the face. It has huge knockbacks so you can, like, stop some blasters from actually shooting into you. Which is incredible. Look at that, man. Look at that. Anyone who doubts the power of this character just uh, needs a little bit better, a little bit more practice on sword, just sword tactics, sword functionality. Because this is legit. Like, this damage is no joke. It synergizes with all of the other melee abilities, and frankly, there wasn't enough melee abilities to... To cover the full spectrum, I was using the um, I was using the smoke because there really wasn't a better option. Look at this damage, man! Look at this damage! Holy cow! By the way, this is exploding death burst, guys. This is Exploding Death Burst in a Power Level 100 situation here. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe. Leave a thumbs up. Comment down below if there's any other videos you'd like me to cover. Catch you guys next time. So if you like this video, uh, come check us out on Twitch. Uh, we, we Twitch stream 15 to 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, every single morning starting at 9am. Uh, we'd really appreciate the support. Uh, we're working really hard to uh, grow the Twitch channel. So come and check us out. Come, uh, come help us grow and be part of Team Vash. Thanks, guys.